Electric cars have this thing where they can only go so far because of the charge, the, the amount of energy they store. And the thing that you see online is not always what you're gonna get in real life. Just like with a gas car, the miles per gallon may not be what the real world numbers turn out to be. And so that's what I'm gonna do today is take a brand new Tesla Model Y 2020. This is the all wheel drive long range edition and drive it until it stops. I've done it before with my Model 3. We're gonna to try to take the same route and just see exactly what it can do. Before we get too far in the video, I wanna to mention today's sponsor, Climate Exchange. From now until February 24th, Climate Exchange is doing a fundraiser in which you can enter to win a brand new Tesla of your choice, and they're gonna cover the cost of the taxes. So that could be a Model S, a Model 3, a Model X, or a Model Y, all for the cost of just one raffle ticket. On top of all that, the proceeds go to a good place here. Climate Exchange is a nonprofit organization that provides research, education, and advocacy tools to accelerate the transition to a low carbon economy, both at the local and state level. So it makes sense that they would be giving away a Tesla as the grand prize because of course they and Tesla share the same vision of a future that is full of renewable energy and especially when it comes to transportation. So check out the link in my bio down below to enter the raffle and don't wait, there's only 4,000 tickets available total, which is pretty good odds considering some of the other ones that are out there with much bigger pools. So thanks Climate Exchange for sponsoring the show and let's get back into the video. All right, so we're passing through Escondido now, which is Northeast San Diego County. And it looks like we're headed to 29 Palms. This is where I've went before. We do the turnaround and try to make it all the way back. Right now we've got 252 miles of range, it says, and 146 miles of range uh, to go, or 146 miles distance to travel. And it says we're gonna have 14% uh, state of charge when we get there. So 14%, now in theory, if you just subtract those, you'll have over 100 miles of range left, which is something more like 30%. So this is the story here. This is how, you know, even though we're traveling a, the speed limit or five miles an hour over, we really lose a lot of range uh, when you start to travel at higher speeds. And I mean, look at that, like 14% versus 30%, that's a big difference. Of course, you know, things can change between now and then, depending on how the traffic goes and wind and all those, but we'll see what it's like when we get there. Um, hopefully we have more than that. Otherwise we'll end up kind of like before where we thought we could go much further than we really could. We're just about to make the turn onto the 60 freeway, which heads out to 29 Palms, our halfway point, or our ideal halfway point. Now we were looking at 14, 15% state of charge by the time we got there. Now we're up to 25. And I think that's because our watt hours per mile, our efficiency, you can kind of think of it like your miles per gallon, has dropped from the early, early part of the trip, which was right around 350, 360 watt hours, down to 307. We've traveled 103.7 miles and used 32 kilowatt hours of energy. It's like how many gallons of gas, essentially. So things are looking better, uh, but still, I think, I would hope that we would get there with above 30% state of charge. So more to come. Okay, we just stopped and ate really quickly here at the Cabazon Outlet Malls in California. We've so far traveled 133.9 miles, used 40 kilowatt hours of energy with a watt hours per mile of 298. Originally, the plan was to go to 29 Palms, which is our turnaround point typically. That's another hour from here, and we need to be in Santa Monica at five o'clock. So we're not gonna be able to make that. Instead, we're gonna head over towards uh, Wrightwood, California, which is the Angeles Crest Highway. You're probably familiar with it if you've seen some of my videos. And uh, and then go you know down through Pasadena and stuff through there, try to wrap up hopefully near where our destination is tonight and uh, see how many miles we actually get. Hermosa Beach, California. We didn't drive until it ended, until it actually stopped for safety reasons. 
Last time we did this, we were kind of in a more controlled setting in a parking lot that had lots of space and wasn't super populated. Here we're on the streets of Los Angeles where, as you could imagine, there's tons of people, tons of stuff going on. It just isn't safe. But I did drive it all the way down to zero miles. And the previous two times I did it, I got an additional 12 to 13 miles. So if you want to tack that on to see a true all the way to zero dead mileage, I think that's a fair assumption. And I didn't want to leave you guys hanging there without the real detailed stats here. So I'm looking at Teslab, and this is the app, of course, that is like the Fitbit for your Tesla that tracks everything, all the trips, the efficiency rates, all those kind of things. It's totally free. You can get it at teslab.app. That's T-E-Z-L-A-B dot app slash Ben Sullins. And if you want to go premium and store longer data, it's about the cost of a cup of coffee per month. So that's the little plug for there. And with it, you'll see exactly what kind of stats I'm looking at here. Specifically, when I go to the track, tab I can scroll through all my previous trips and here you can see the battery now this one is from the day that you saw me driving there we used the entire thing and it took us five hours and 54 minutes when I click on that you can see the breakdown of high efficiency medium low and then our phantom drain which in this case was actually negative one miles is kind of funny it must have been just rolling downhill so with that we can see that our total distance traveled was 252 miles which is fantastic I actually am really pleased with that and most of that was in that low efficiency, and that is a large part due to the wind that we encountered on our drive. So while we were here, uh, the overall average efficiency was 80%, which I think is fantastic. This is with the 20-inch Uber turbine wheels, so that does play a factor. If I had the aero wheels, I would expect more. But still, Tesla rates this car at 322 miles or so with the wheels that are on it. So they should be able to get that. And you may have noticed that there is a bit of battery degradation, which I'll show here in a second. And that, I don't know where it's from, but just prior to us doing this test, there was a software update that increased the range from about 299 was what I was getting before to 315, 314. So that's what we were starting with. Well, I wanted to make it the best possible scenario to just really see what this thing could do. So the climate on and sentry mode on here. The climate on is when we were not in the car, but the climate controls were still on. So that's not just like overall climate usage. That is from essentially when we went to grab a quick bite to eat and came back. The climate was on for 12 minutes there without us actually being driving. Sentry mode was not on during the trip because we wanted to kind of conserve battery and see how that went. Then I can click here on view trips. And this is where you can see the detailed breakdown. Now, every time I stop, it was a new trip, essentially. So starting with the V3 supercharger down in Chula Vista here up to Cabazon, where I went to grab food, you can see that essentially, you know, the different colors of the trip is the, the different speeds. These little indicators are the, the most efficient and the least efficient. That entire trip there was two hours and eight minutes. We had uh, 318 watt hours per mile. That could definitely be better. Perfect kind of weather conditions. It, we don't have wind on here. That is something we'd like to add, but wind would be a good addition because definitely there was some wind that was a factor. But overall, I would say this, we did pretty good. Average efficiency, 75%. Most efficient sector, 206% going downhill, of course, and then our least efficient sector, 57%, going uphill kind of into the wind there with the 73 mile an hour uh, average speed. So that was the first kind of major leg. Then we went Cabazon to Cabazon, that's just across the parking lot again, and then Cabazon to Hermosa Beach, and this is where we kind of ended up. Now, we did want to go out to the desert, like I said, but we were trying to make this other appointment in LA and Santa Monica. Totally real world experience, um, and you can see there, again, I, I feel pretty good about what we were able to do here. Two and a half hours, roughly 135 miles covered, again, 74 degrees, so kind of perfect conditions overall. This one, 274 watt hours per mile, so much better. And and a lot of that is because we were city driving. So originally when I did this, part of the idea was let's drive out to the desert, but definitely going really fast through an area with high wind is going to just, just drain your battery. Whereas driving through a city, especially one like LA that has tons of stop and go traffic, even on the freeways, you're going to just have far better uh, range efficiency. So the slower you go, definitely the better you're going to have overall. And you can see that with an average or overall efficiency for this trip of 87%, which is really great. Most efficient, 173, and least efficient, 52. Now let's look at the battery degradation and talk about that with this car. So back here on the main page, and again, the car is sleeping, so... 
you won't see that. Um, then I scroll down here, you can kind of see all the different views and all that. And the battery health one is the really interesting one. Currently, it's showing an estimated max range of 311 miles. This is after 3,975 miles. So we haven't even hit 4,000 miles on this car yet. Now, when I zoom in here, you'll see exactly what happened. See that orange dot right there that I'm trying to click on but can't? That dot is when that software update came into play. So prior to that, we were looking, you can see the bottom of the axis here is 292. So we were really trending down. And then that software update came and bam, we're right back up. So we waited for that intentionally to do this so that way we could have kind of the best actual scenario, the kind of most up-to-date one. And that's that's essentially what we were, we were able to get with our driving. So that's it for this one, guys. Subscribe, like, do all the things. Let me know what you think about this in the comments. And I'll check out this video over here which is the last time we did it in the Model 3, so you can kind of compare those numbers to these numbers. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you back here in the next one.